Namaste. So today we're going to summarize the qualifications, or as Nomi, Bhagavan Nomi calls them, the prerequisites for Atma Vichara, which is the principal means for self-realization in Ramana Maharshi's teaching. And this comes, of course, from Aparokshanubhuti, which is much older, written by Shankaracharya, and which contains all the philosophy and all the methods needed to attain self-realization. So let's take a look at verse 10. Aum Ukta Sadhana Yuktena Vichara Purushena Hi Kartavyo Jnana Siddhyarta Matmanaha Subhamichata Ukta Sadhana Yuktena Possessing the said qualifications Vicharaha, constant inquiry and reflection. Purushena, by a person, he only. Kartavyaha, should be practiced. Jnana Siddhyartam, with a view to attaining self realization. Atmanaha, of one's own. Shubhamichata, desiring good. Only that person who possesses the said qualifications as means should constantly inquire and reflect with a view to attaining self-realization, desiring his own good. Self-realization is the greatest good, the summum bonum. That knowledge and that realization but there is nothing beyond. There is nothing greater than. And the reason why it's the greatest good is that it means the end of all suffering. There is no suffering in Brahman. And as we discussed yesterday, actually, Brahman is everything, even Maya. So when we become situated in Brahman, we lose all of the attributes of a separate self, an individual, which are exactly the things that cause suffering. But before we can execute this sadhana, this atma vichara, successfully, we have to meet the qualifications, or as Nomi says, the prerequisites. I looked up in the Sanskrit, and actually the Sanskrit simply says four sadhanas. What are these four? Let's take a look. The first is vairagya, which means indifference to objects of enjoyment. The second is viveka, discrimination between the seer and the seen. Third is the six treasures, Shama, Dhamma, Uparati, Titiksha, Shraddha, and Samadhana. And finally, Mumukshuta, a burning desire for mukti, or liberation. And actually, as we pointed out, without this burning desire, none of the others are going to do you much good. Because you can also use the good karma, which are uh, generated by these sadhanas, for material ends. It's up to you. So the desire, the sankalpa, with which you perform these yogic sadhanas, it makes a great deal of difference. If you approach them like, oh, let me make some good karma so I can enjoy. <laughs> the result is going to be far different than if you approach them 
with mumukshita, a burning desire for liberation. Why should we want liberation? To end our suffering. See, the individual identity is like a postal address for karma. When you have an individual identity in the material world associated with a body and a mind, you have an address where Maya can deliver your karma. Huh? Package for you, sir. <laughs> but when you pass beyond identification with matter, specifically the body and mind, and you identify only with Brahman, there's no more individuality, and so there's no more address for karma to, to deliver to. So the karma simply gets returned to the sender. Addressee unknown. <laughs> Moved. No forwarding address. <laughs> so this is the potency. Uh, this is the uh, effect of Atma Vichara. And uh, of course, it all depends on how attached we are to Maya. If we're really attached, we won't be able to give up this subtle identification. We won't be able to pull ourselves away from material enjoyment. And there are some people who want their cake and eat it too, you know? They still want to enjoy the material world, but they also want liberation, or they think they do. Well, I've got news for them. They don't really want it. Because if you really want liberation, you're willing to do anything, whatever is required to get it. And here we have exactly a recipe for how you do this. First, you have to meet these requirements. And by the way, the same list of requirements is given in Shankaracharya's commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. We covered that some time ago on this channel. So these requirements are not simply um, specific to this scripture, but they are found in all the great scriptures. And they are really the prerequisites for liberation. Why? Because the pursuit of liberation and enlightenment is basically a kind of dialogue or negotiation between Brahman, or the self, Atma, and Maya. You know, why are we here in the first place? Because as Atman, we said to Maya, I want to be many. This is uh, discussed in the Upanishads. That Atman said, I am one. I want to be many. And Maya is like, oh, sure, you know, <laughs> here you go. And so we see there are so many planets and stars, so many worlds and universes, so many different creatures, bodies, minds, different forms, and they all have different karma, different activities, different sensations, and so on. An innumerable variety of form. So, okay, it's like, you want it, you got it. <laughs> so the cure for all this, uh, because all of this involves suffering, birth, old age, disease, death, rebirth, karma, oh, the list goes on and on. So the cure for this is to simply withdraw one's interest, withdraw one's participation in the game. And so to do that, you have to be able to turn your back on Maya, 
to literally lose interest in the mind and body because they're a bad deal. We all want enjoyment. We all want happiness. This is probably the basic drive in all existence. But to try to gain happiness from objects that are, number one, impermanent, two, always imperfect, and three, not self, simply leads to suffering. So what we really want, we really want sat, chit, ananda, eternity, unlimited consciousness, and bliss. But because the material world is based on duality, it's asat, nishchit, and nirananda. <laughs> so how can we get lasting happiness from it? You know, it's a bad deal. Like sometimes in business, you get yourself into a situation where you have committed yourself to uh, a certain deal with a, another company or something like that or a big customer. And then you discover that, you know, there's all kinds of strings attached. You know, the customer is a big fault finder, always changing the requirements, um, gives information late or not at all, you know, uh, or the company that you're trying to make a deal with is trying to cheat you, is trying to get, get services from you without paying or something like this. Huh? See, so this is Maya. Maya means a false promise. See, and this goes back to the dream that I had some time ago, which I described here, but I'm going to tell it again. I found myself in a very upscale beach resort type community. And I went into this place, which is sort of like a bar. And my dream companion was there. Huh? Maya was there. And she was reading this very exquisite, very expensive book. You know, everything there was like first class. You know, the words uh, bespoke and uh, artisanal <laughs> were used a lot to describe it. You know, very richy, rich, rich. And everybody was young and beautiful and single, you know, that kind of a place. So she was reading this book and telling me the story that the book is about a beach community, very much like the one in the dream, where everything looked so bucolic and so pleasant and nice. But actually, it was run by this big, shady corporation that had evil designs on everybody there and was going to cheat them out of their money. This is the wrong, this is Maya. So I actually, I stood up in the dream and I said, so that's the secret. You know, that's the secret. This world, this Maya, it looks so nice, huh? Just look at the ads on TV. All the products are so shiny and beautiful. <laughs> all the spokesmen and the ads, you know, are all young and beautiful and like that. But, you know, you buy the thing and then it breaks down. Or you get one and you find it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Or, you know, you, you marry the girlfriend and suddenly you find out, you know, she has an abusive uncle or father or something like there's always something wrong it's never perfect it's never what you bargained for so the only solution is to back out of it cancel the contract and how can you do that if you're dependent on the goods and services that maya supplies you can't 
That means, first, before you can inquire into the self, Brahman, successfully, you have to get away from the addiction to maya. You have to lose interest, basically, because you know you're going to be cheated every time. As long as you're on maya's platform, as long as you think you're an individual, as long as you think, here I am, a body in the material world, huh? I am a conscious entity within a body, within this world, within this universe. You're stuck. You can't do anything. You have to change your point of view, at least theoretically, to I am a conscious being. I am Brahman. Within me, there are worlds and worlds and universes. And they are mine. On that platform, then you can make a successful uh, deal or negotiation. Because now you're independent. You're not getting your happiness from the conditional material world. You're getting it from the unconditioned, the Brahman the source of all consciousness and light. And that is the completion of self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.